Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the earnings conference call of Usha Marketing Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Devrishi Singh from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Usha Martin's Q4 and FY24 earnings conference call. We have with us Mr. Rajiv Jhawar, Managing Director of the company, Mr. Anirban Sanyal, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Abhijit Paul, Finance Controller, and Ms. Shreya Jhawar from the Strategy and Growth Team of the company. We hope all of you have had the opportunity to refer to the earnings documents that we shared with you earlier. We would now like to initiate the call with the opening remarks from the management, following which we will have the forum open for a question and answer session. Before we start, I would like to point out that some statements made in today's call may be forward looking in nature and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the earnings presentation. I would now like to invite Mr. Rajiv Jhawar to make his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the management team of Usha Martin, I would like to welcome you all to our earnings conference call. I will begin by sharing some updates on operations and strategy, following which Mr. Anirban Sanyal will run you through the key financial highlights. I am delighted to share that we have concluded the financial year 2024 on a positive note, supported by our stronger operating cash flows and balance sheet. Our focus on diversifying our product mix with an emphasis on higher value added ropes has been instrumental in driving our performance throughout the year. On a year on year basis, we achieved a 16.6% increase in operating EBITDA driven by a 290 basis point improvement in operating EBITDA margins. In FY24, the wire rope segment's contribution to our consolidated revenue increased to 71%, up from 61% in FY23. At the same time, the overall share of the value-added industry segment in our consolidated revenue stood at 51%, compared to 44% in FY23. Notably, within the wire rope category, the contribution of the value-added segment rose to 71% in FY24, up from 65% in FY23. Additionally, revenue from international markets accounted for 55% of our total revenue during the same period. These trends have driven the improvements in our margins. The past financial year saw progress in our Ranchi Facilities Phase 1 CapEx program. This expansion is primarily focused on increasing capacities of high value added products. Commercial operations of these expanded capacities have begun from quarter 1 this year onwards. We expect to ramp up production at the facility gradually over the next 9 to 12 months, which will help to significantly enhance our performance going forward. Following Phase 1 CapEx program, we are advancing into the next phase of CapEx with an investment of Rs. 167 crores at our Ranchi facility. This phase is expected to be completed within the next 18 to 24 months and is funded all by internal accruals. During the financial year 24, the company also made considerable progress in deepening engagement with major global OEMs and extending its international presence. Regarding the development of our expansion strategy in Saudi Arabia, which we discussed during the last earnings call, I am pleased to state that our plans are progressing as per schedule. With the establishment of a step-down subsidiary through our Dubai subsidiary, Brunton Wire Ropes, we are well placed to offer value-added wire rope products and services in this region. 
As we closely monitor market dynamics and strengthen our position, a presence, we maintain a positive outlook on the growth opportunities in this entire region. Moving forward, our strategy would largely focus on value-driven value volume expansion. With a strong emphasis on our Viro business, we are committed to maximizing the utilization of our existing resources. We are confident that this approach will continue to positively contribute to both operational and financial performance. In conclusion, I would like to emphasize that our commitment to the growth initiatives at Usha Martin remains strong. The company remains dedicated to meeting the diverse demands of the global market in the wire rope sector. With a promising demand outlook for our products and our strong position within the sector, we are optimistic about further improving our results in the future. Before I close, I would like to cover some developments on the management side. Our CFO, Mr. Nirban Sanyal, has decided to step down from his position for personal reasons. We sincerely thank him for his valuable contributions over the years and wish him well for the future endeavors. Moving forward, Mr. Bajit Paul, a dedicated member of our finance team with over 18 years of experience in finance accounts taxation, will take over as CFO from 1st May 2024. I would now like to invite Mr. Nirban Sanyal to present the operational and financial highlights for the quarter ended 31st March 24. Thank you and over to you, Anirban. Thank you and a very good afternoon to everyone. I will now provide a brief overview of the company's operating and financial performance for the quarter and year ended 31st March 2024. The consolidated net revenue from operations stood at rupees 829 crores in Q4 of FY24 as against rupees 855.2 crores in Q4 of FY23. This 3.1% year-on-year reduction can be primarily attributed to decrease contributions from both the wire and strand and LRPC segments. However, it is noteworthy that our wire rope segment maintains steady revenues, accounting for almost 73% of total revenues. The sustained performance of this segment played an important role in supporting our overall revenue performance during the quarter. Our operating EBITDA for the quarter stood at rupees 151.5 crores as against rupees 154 crores in Q4 of FI23. Our operating EBITDA per ton stood at rupees 31,784. Furthermore, the Q4 FI24 operating EBITDA margin increased to 18.3%, up from 18% in Q4 of FI23. This consistent overall EBITDA margin position can be attributed to the company's sustained focus on value-added products and its expanding global presence. Additionally, our net profit for the quarter stood at rupees 106.3 crores, reflecting a 1% increase from rupees 105.3 crores in Q4 of FY23. On a full year basis, net revenue from operations amounted to rupees 3,225.2 crores compared to rupees 3,267.8 crores in FY23. Notably, the wire rope segment's contribution to total revenues grew to 71% in FY24 from 67% in FY23. Moving forward, our strategic focus remains on further increasing our contribution from value-added products while gradually reducing the share of low-value offerings. International markets continue to play a pivotal role, accounting for 55% of our FY24 consolidated revenues. The company recognizes international markets as a significant avenue for growth and is committed to further enhancing its penetration in these markets in the future. Operating EBITDA stood at Rs. 598.6 crores in FY24 as against Rs. 513.3 crores in FY23. Profit after tax for FY24 stood at Rs. 424.1 crores, registering a 21% year-on-year increase. On the balance sheet front, our net debt as of March 31, 2024 
stood at rupees 124 crores a significant improvement from rupees 184.8 crores as of 31st march 2023 this improvement is reflected in our net debt to equity ratio which improved to 0.05x as of march 24 compared to 0.09x as of march 2023 despite the capex spend of approximately rupees 278 crores in fy24 and the allocation of funds for different disbursements our net debt remains at comfortable levels. We continue to proactively maintain higher inventory levels considering the complexities of global logistics, particularly amidst the current geopolitical landscape. This approach enables us to adeptly address the needs of our expanding customer base, including new clients in new geographies, thereby reinforcing our agility and readiness in a dynamic market environment. Coming to our cash flows, we are pleased to report a healthy year-on-year -year improvement. The cash flow from operations before income taxes for FY24 stands at Rs. 561 crores, representing 94% of operating EBITDA, compared to Rs. 345 crores during FY23, accounting for 67% of operating EBITDA. These robust cash flows, combined with ample headroom on working capital lines, will continue to support our planned capital allocations. In conclusion, I would like to emphasize that overall with the positive outlook for demand for our product and our strong position in the market, the company remains committed to maintaining strong financial discipline. Going forward, Usha Martin remains focused on consistently improving its financial performance and well poised to create more value for all its stakeholders. This brings me to the end of my address. I would now request the moderator to open the line for the question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Kunjan Kabra from Niveshai. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, uh, so, my, uh, I wanted to ask you a question. Firstly, that uh, the CAPEX has got delayed by a quarter or so. So, last quarter, uh, you guided off a volume growth of around 15,000 tons from the new CAPEX. So, is that guidance still hold uh, where that will be able to ramp it up? Uh, uh, do we have that kind of a demand visibility also? And just from that perspective, I wanted to understand that, uh, you know, the other customers visiting us and we have that kind of a, uh, order visibility from our new customers as well. Secondly, what kind of, uh, you know, uh, what, what's the tenure of the order visibility that we have right now? For example, if we are getting what, for how much period do we have, uh, order visibility in this business in general? I wanted to understand for you. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, firstly, yes, the CapEx uh, was uh, just got completed in Q4, and uh, we expect to ramp up the production uh, during uh, uh, the coming quarters. And we ex and we we are still online to achieve the 15 20 thousand quantity increase uh, with almost 15 percent, about 12 to 15 percent increase in volume, as we had mentioned earlier. And we do expect that to happen uh, gradually coming in the coming quarters. Uh, to your next question on the order book and the overall demand situation, uh, I would say that this is stable and particularly from all the various actions uh, and the initiatives the company had taken by developing customers in Europe and different parts of the world, I'm happy to say that we have got a good response uh, for all the supplies which we have made and we expect uh, the order book to continue uh, to support the increased volumes which we are uh, looking at in this year. Uh, coming to the uh, order book position, generally we have uh, one to two months order but because 85% of the business comes from the replacement market, 
and through our own distribution and dealer network. Uh, mm-hmm. This is something which is normal in our business, and we continue to uh, get healthy order booking. For big projects, sometimes for our European, say for example, for our Brunton Shaw business, we see an order book, uh, generally an order book for six to eight months uh, for the large projects. And I'm happy to say that we have a fairly healthy order book on that front as well. Okay, okay. So secondly, I uh, wanted to understand that quarter on quarter, our EBITDA per ton, not talking about the margins, but EBITDA per ton has decreased from 34 to 31,000 per ton approximately. So is that because of the product mix as realizations have been quite uh, steady? So is it because of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, product mix change or why has the EBITDA per ton come down this quarter? See, what uh, we have been always saying in our previous calls on, on a similar questions, that we should yes, look Though you have maintained the margins of what you have guided of 18% that you have maintained, but just wanted to understand, is it because of the product mix? Or? Uh, you see, the product mix, it's a very diversified product mix within uh, uh, between wire ropes, LRPC and wires, and within the wire ropes, also between the GP ropes and the special ropes. Uh, and as we have mentioned in our previous calls also, that we should look at the uh, trend year on year. You know, gradually we have been able to uh, increase it from 26,000 to 32,000 odd per ton. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and, you know, a quarter by quarter, be- between 1,000 to 2,000 rupees, there could always be a variation because of the product mix or the uh, the mix between the various uh, uh, product lines we have, but overall we hold to our strategy of being closer to the targets what we have been able to achieve, that these are the numbers we feel that we would be able to maintain with an increased volume, we expect the performance to be better. Okay. So, but uh, now uh, when we are uh, venturing into value-added products, uh, the expansion is entirely into that. Plus, we are going to cater to the export market. So, so what kind of, a, uh, you know, uh, as compared to GP ropes versus the value-added groups and plus the export market, so what kind of value growth, 12 to 15 is the volume growth is what you are targeting, but what kind of value growth can be, can be achieved, I, uh, if you can highlight that plus, the cost efficiency that we are taking towards, you know, our Indian units supplying wires and strands to the uh, European, uh, to the, uh, to the, to the Shaw, uh, plant. So what kind of cost efficiency can we see from that side plus the uh, market that we are trying to cater to value added and export markets? So what kind of value growth can we see from, on that side? I'm sure that in export markets, I think the value is a little higher in terms of realization. So if you can highlight. Yeah, you see, as far as margins are concerned, we have, you know, moved gradually from 16% to 18% to close to where we are today, close to around, close to around 20%. Uh, in a, in a dynamic product mix, uh, and, and, uh, and, and also, uh, a dynamic market between GP special ropes, I would say our endeavor would always be to try and see that we hold on to the margins where we have and gradually definitely keep on improving as the product mix starts getting enriched and, and the, uh, you know, realizations also improve. So our, our objective would be, you know, when we have were at 16, we said, yes, we will gradually go up to 18 and then we have gradually gone up to 20. It's very difficult to predict that we will go from 20 to 22 or 23. We would rather say that let's focus to see that we maintain and gradually go up and focus on trying to see that how we continue to increase our share of the value added products and gradually ramp up the production by 12 to 15 percent and get the benefit of both. In this process, depending on the product mix, which market, which, uh, you know, the the margins could fluctuate, and our endeavor would always be to 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 keep on increasing. Coming to the second question of yours, which is the integration with the international business, that I am happy to say that is working well. 
and in fact this integration with india with and our helen plant supplying to brunton shaw as well as to our brunton wire this is helping us to become more competitive because of the cost advantage and because of the group making a profit both at the wire supply end as well as the finished product end we are able to look at the costing in totality that is helping us to become more competitive and being able to establish a, a more competitive uh, environment to get more orders and i'm happy to say that brunton shaw over the last few months has been able to win some large contracts giving us a order booking for the first time i would say for 7 8 months uh, ahead which is helping us to plan the wire supplies much in advance from india as well as from our thailand plant and to answer your question definitely because of being totally integrated on this we we are having a, a cost advantage of 300 to 400 dollars per ton compared to what we were buying from our european sources yeah definitely thank you so much for answering these questions and good luck to your entire team i'll get back in the queue thank you so much thank you The next question is from the line of Aman Sundhalia from AK Securities. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, my first question is the revenue growth as well as profitability has muted this quarter related to Q4 23. What are the reasons for that, sir? Uh, thanks for your question. I can take that. Uh, so, uh, firstly. Uh, because of certain logistical challenges like we mentioned in the international market because of the red sea issue certain orders have been deferred from q4 because our materials for uh, the uk was stuck in transit and the orders couldn't be uh, built in the uh, q4 these are expected to be completed over q1 and q2 and uh, as you know of course europe is a high value market for us so this timing issue has had a certain impact on the revenue as well as profitability for q4 secondly uh, in the past quarter we also had a, a scheduled capital maintenance for the lrpc equipment uh, for about 6 weeks or so that did impact our lrpc production and also impacted our revenues to some extent and also there have been uh, you know in general over the past few quarters some uh, pressure on the lrpc realizations as well uh, so what we've been doing is reducing our exposure to that segment because we've anticipated this and now going forward we want to focus more on plasticated and galvanized lrpc uh, and those are more profitable as well uh, and as mentioned that the contribution of these increased uh, volumes from the capex program Uh, over the next year hopefully will help drive the improvement in the top line and then you know uh, translate to the bottom line as well okay uh, when can uh, the dispatches from the wave one expansion start and when it will start showing the in top line and bottom line uh, as i mentioned commercial operations of phase one expanded capacities have begun from quarter one onwards of this year we expect the ramp up of volumes gradually over the next 9 to 12 months which will help us to enhance our top line going forward however i would like to caution that we don't want to push our volumes by compromising on price or margins but rather ramp up gradually and continue to focus on the value added products having said that as i mentioned uh, that we expect the volume growth during the year to be between 12 to 15% compared to the previous year sir as far as my knowledge is concerned uh, rock fill netting wire is a big opportunity so are we uh, in the mountainous terrain to avoid mountain stones from uh, flooding so are we getting in rock netting wires as well as what is the plan in that business uh Yes. Uh, so there is a large market for this globally like you rightly mentioned and as part of our next uh, uh, wave of capex actually the wave 2 we are getting into uh, certain high value wires the aluminum zinc wires which are actually used in this uh, uh, rock fall barrier protection uh, industry as well so we do expect these capacities to go on stream within this uh, financial year itself and uh, hopefully we would be able to uh, cater to this market like you rightly mentioned it is a big opportunity so it's a high margin product 
Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, within the wire segment, and also there are some strengths uh, involved in this. It's a, it's a, I would say uh, uh, it's a decent value uh, product. Okay, sir. And sir, uh, uh, Saudi was expected to contribute from Q125. Has it started contributing, and how big is the opportunity here? Saudi is, a, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, Saudi is on, on track and uh, we have started shipments to Saudi Arabia and uh, we expect uh, uh, from quarter on onwards the revenues to start uh, coming in from there and uh, we have our management team, our sales team already in place and uh, our warehouse and our facilities uh, for rigging also getting commissioned now. So we should start getting the benefit from quarter one and gradually we will see the benefit of this coming during the year. Uh, it's, a, it's a growing market within the Middle East. Uh, it's a large market uh, compared to the rest of the Middle East and we expect to get a decent share of this market uh, in a year's time. Uh, we are excited and we expect good business uh, to start growing, particularly on the oil sector. Uh, some big infrastructure side on the grain and the uh, 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 port sector. We expect good business to come in from there. And so one important question in the earlier con call, there was an update that companies working on synthetic slings. So what is the status on synthetic slings as a plan a setup and when it will start contributing to top line and bottom line? And one more thing, is it confined to Europe or will we get business from other uh, geographical uh, geographies as well? Yes, so uh, to answer the first part, the company is uh, working on launching the synthetic slings as a complementary uh, product line to the core business and uh, the manufacturing would happen in our uh, BSUK facility. Uh, the equipment has started coming in uh, and we expect to gradually uh, again begin the operations within Q2 of this year. Uh, to answer the second part, the target geographies for this uh, at first would be primarily UK and you know within Europe and then at a later stage we would also like to target the uh, Americas region uh, once we are able to build a track record and get some traction in the market uh, and uh, for, for all, all, all of these different geographies the key applications for this would be uh, at first in the oil and gas as well as the wind energy sector. Thank you sir. The next question is from the line of Dhananjay Bagrodia from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Congratulations on a good set of results in this environment. Just wanted to understand what is the possible asset terms and utilization for the new facility for the expansion in Rachi? The asset term would be, I would say, of the new uh, facility would be close to uh, one and a half to two times of the investment what we have done. Okay, and uh, utilization could be up to what percentage, just to have an idea, would be same as the previous facilities? Yes, because you see, it would be at a similar level. Okay, sure. And so what would, would roughly OP per turn for this facility be uh, similar to what our current uh, OP per turn is? Like, can I can can uh, can you come again on this question, please? So, like operating profit per ton, would that increase? Uh, would that increase significantly for the new facility, or would be marginal increase? Uh, it would it would also depend on the product mix what we do. But uh, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, our objective would be to maintain uh, uh, um, the EBITDA margin, which has gradually gone up to close to the current levels of close to uh, nineteen point five twenty percent. And, and going forward, as we keep on enriching our product mix, as we look at the competitive en uh, environment, uh, let's see how we progress. Hopefully, it should get better, but, you know, it is better to, uh, to gradually ramp it up uh, uh, and, uh, you know, as the volumes grow. This year, we would be looking at more to see that we, we work at minimum these levels, protect the minimum levels which we have been operating, and first start building the volumes. And then let's see how we progress, how the new capacities, the new markets, we are able to develop what kind of price uh, we are able to achieve in these markets. 
hopefully we should be able to to do better that's what i can say at this stage sure sure and so lastly how is the uh, competitive intensity we playing out a domestically i mean competitive domestic players and international players you see as far as the competition will always be there in any business and we need to uh, we need to always uh, Uh, try to be uh, better in terms of quality delivery service and be able to be having the product at the right time to the customers and and we focus on that in domestic market we have about 60 to 65% of the market share and uh, mm-hmm. we hope to continue with that in terms of the international market our competition would be mainly with the european and the american manufacturers and the koreans mm-hmm. and we are through our global distribution as well as integration with brunton shaw and our uh, european brands trying to see that how we can gradually get a decent market share from that that front okay sure uh, thank you sir thank you sir. yeah thank you yes thank to that uh, the competitive intensity we see a little bit more in the gp rope segment uh, you know especially in the us and some parts of the middle east so our goal in the middle east for example is to get closer to the customers go into services uh, and provide the total solution to customers so that rigging business that we've been able to do and pivot our business model in places like the middle east have, have really helped us retain our market share and even grow our market share and uh, you know fight the competitive intensity in that way oh thank you thank you the next question is from the line of pratik banthia from gerek capital please go ahead i just wanted to understand you know what uh, what would be the realistic realizations for us in lrpc and y strand because they went trending kind of downward so like at what number would that stabilize us uh is that something you could you know give me a sense of the the prices uh, have you know the steel prices over last one year on the wire rod prices have been down by about 6000 rupees which is a direct reflection on the lrpc and the wire prices which is very sensitive to the steel price uh, fluctuation and uh, on an average the uh, lrpc from uh, has prices have come down uh, to around uh, Uh, 63000 from 71000 uh, last year and it all depends on the steel prices of course it's uh, it's become with more competition coming from uh, other integrated players the price prices are under pressure and that is something which is uh, i mentioned that we are trying to focus to get to more and more of the plasticated and the galvanized lrpc which would protect us from that uh, price fall on the wire front the prices have also come down from uh, 80 uh, to to around 80000 uh, uh, rupees per ton compared to 90000 rupees per ton so it's almost a 10000 rupees reduction all the movement is very much uh, in line with the steel prices i would say yeah uh, sir this is dawal here uh, so uh, we are at 180000 odd uh, tons for the past year 24 Over next three-year period, uh, what sort of volumes uh, would you be looking at? I would say that uh, we would we would look at 12 to 15 percent growth uh, over the next two to three years, based on the various capex initiatives already implemented and underway. We expect this to happen. Okay. So the data which you mentioned in the presentation that which is going live from Q1 25. uh what is that capacity uh, the q1 capacity the total increase is 40000 tons approximately in the phase 1 uh, capex expansion and phase 2 is around 10000 and as i mentioned we will gradually ramp it up during this year and we should be able to get around 12% to 15% over what we produced last year or what we sold last year Okay, and if I understand correctly, uh, given our product gradual change in product mix uh, over the past three-year period, uh, the same would continue, uh, and that would result in a better uh, EBITDA growth compared to the volume growth. Uh, I would I would say that we would now look at a uh, trying to see that if we can continue to achieve the EBITDA percentage. Uh, what we have been able to achieve and focus to see that we take the advantage of volume 
and as we develop better products and a better product mix and more into the higher value added products we will see a gradual uh, uh, improvement on the on the ebitda margin but that our immediate priority in this year would be to try and see that we maintain that and get the advantage of the higher volume this year and then see gradually how the margins uh, uh, improve with the better product mix Okay. okay interesting and last thing uh, so in this entire expansion uh, uh, would be uh, would be done with the uh, cash flows or uh, any other uh, funding requirement would emerge all be done with internal accruals uh, the phase 1 was done with internal accruals the phase 2 will be done with internal accruals and uh, with the healthy cash flows which we are expecting uh, we expect to grow Uh, and we have no plans for any taking any debt or any raising of any funds okay thank you very much good luck thank you the next question is from the line of kunal kothari from centrum broking please go ahead yeah uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, sir you mentioned about the uh, expected volume growth of around 15 to 20000 ton in fy 25 uh will it uh, be coming from via europe segment only or uh, it will be divided among three see it will be a combination of all because you see we have to see you know our endeavor would be to try to maximize the rope part but uh, uh, we need to cater to the demand of all customers so it will be a combination of uh, uh, ropes uh, wires lrpc plasticated lrpc uh we would like to see that we can improve the uh asset utilization and and uh, try to make the endeavor would be to maximize rope but others would also be there as a part of the uh, increase okay so uh second is in lrpc uh, can you say help us to understand that uh, what will be the uh, realization pattern difference between what is the product range in lrpc that we are selling today and with the new product range that we are coming with in the plasticated and galvanized similarly both on the realization part and the margin front what change that we can look forward the lrpc plasticated lrpc is a is, is a project based business with uh, with uh, limited volumes in the market so it is not that the entire quantity can be converted Uh, we are targeting 3 to 500 tons a month uh, uh, in 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 this year depending on how these projects get uh, 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 coming up so it's only about 8 7 to 8% of the lrpc capacity this is sold at about 130 35000 rupees per ton where we get a contribution of around 50 55000 rupees per ton but the production capacity also gets reduced because it's a much slower process on the other side the lrpc uh, normal is sold at 63 to 64000 rupees per ton with an average contribution of about 8 to 9000 rupees per ton so that is the thing but almost nine, about almost about uh, 90% is sold as the normal lrpc and only i would say 7 to 10% would get developed into the the plasticated lrpc okay uh got it so uh one more question that comes to my mind is that the wire capacity that we are having and the lrpc and wire capacity is much higher so uh, like how is the manufacturing process do uh, is it like one to one ratio so that uh, so we are buying uh, wire from the market to Uh, for the product, uh, additional production of the lrpc and wire because we are also selling wires in the market so how is the uh, you know process uh, ratio from wire to strand to wire up and lrpc and also we do purchase from the market uh, for say, uh, for the production of the same no no we our raw material starting is wire rods whether it is for lrpc whether it is for wires or ropes we buy the steel from the integrated steel producers including our uh, uh, erstwhile steel uh, business uh, now uh, run by tata so that's our starting raw material we don't buy any wires and then we have dedicated lrpc line which only produces lrpc 
and then it is the wire and the rope plant which is all within this so it is not interchangeable so lrpc is a uh, integrated right from wire rod to finished product so it's not that i can reduce lrpc and increase rope or vice versa these are independent plants within the same facility and we do not buy any wires we are only starting with wire rod which is processed into lrpc or wire rods which is processed into wires or wire rods which is processed into rope so 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 that is uh, a very well dedicated plant internally not interchangeable okay so does that mean that we have wire capacity near to 1 lakh ton so it is totally sellable or it is been uh, used for for the manufacturing of wire rope or lrpc but it's a separate plant wire the lrpc is a separate plant i cannot use the rpc wire drawing capacity to make ropes so those can only be dedicated for lrpc so it's not that i reduce lrpc and i can increase wire rope uh, it is not possible okay so sir so utilization from 1 lakh ton we are doing nearly 35000 ton of sales in wire itself uh, so why is it so that uh, uh, we are selling the just 35% of our capacity we only want to produce the low end uh, high end wire products uh, earlier we were part of the steel business where we used to even produce low low grades and low margins of wires to evacuate steel over the last 3 years our focus has been to focus only on value added wires lrpc plasticated lrpc as it is a dedicated plant and wire ropes and slowly we have shed out our uh, low value added wires and that is why those facilities are not uh, fully utilized because they don't add really any margin to our business so can you give the mix of the uh, high value added uh, wire and low value added wire mix like in our capacity we don't so we don't uh, calculate that way mostly we have migrated to the higher value added wires okay and the utilization will be near to 70% of that high value wire capacity i around that okay got it that's it from my side thank you sir all the best thank you the next question is from the line of paresh shah from prerna tirth tradecom llp please go ahead uh thank you sir for giving me this opportunity to ask you a question i have just one question uh that is regarding uh, disclosures which has been coming under regulation 292 of sebi wherein one of the promoter and uh, the group promoter company peter house investments has been disclosing shares uh, sold in the market in that they are writing into the bracket that there is a gdr option available to them which can be converted into five equity shares at the discretion of the holder so i would like to understand when this exercise with when when is it due by when we can exercise what will be the price because this can lead to dilution in the equity and uh, it can impact the ratio so can you please elaborate on this gdr uh, stuff that has been done in past the gdrs are uh, uh, have been issued uh, many years ago and these are the outstanding gdrs and uh, one gdr can be uh, converted to five shares it can be done at any point of time and it can be exercised it is considered as the part of the total share capital of the company so it is at the discretion of the gdr holder when he wants to convert it there is no specific time frame for that and currently what is the outstanding gdr uh, we have to oblige for we need to check and get back to you ji uh uh okay sir so i i don't know how you will get back to me so i would request that you can issue a clarificatory note and put it on the uh, site so that all other shareholders can also understand what is happening on uh, gdr front sure so okay. i, I just, just a small clarification it's already part of the disclosures in the annual report so no that already I understand. so yeah. i don't think i don't think any further clarification is required since it's already disclosed fully in the shareholders uh, balance sheet 
as CFO has mentioned, I don't think any specific clarification. If you need anything, you can write to so, so our the CFO. Account. Our CFO will know the exact amount of GDR outstanding, right? Right now, it is already available on our in our balance sheet. So it, it is, is already balance sheet. Yes, correct. And is there a price which has been decided to convert the share? It will be at what price? That is not mentioned no. in the end. No, I I don't think that is mentioned, but. Okay, we can take this. I can uh, you can write to me. I can give you the classification. So the numbers and the holdings, everything is mentioned in the pattern of shareholding. Okay, fair enough. I'll, I'll take that. But at least you know the conversion uh, at what rate which is going to happen is going to help me. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Rajesh Majumdar from PNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. Thanks for the opportunity. So, I had uh, a couple of questions. One is the uh, extent of cash flow that we are throwing up now towards the expansion. And uh, it's nearly going to be to the tune of 500 odd crores for operations uh, at the least. Uh, again, that we have now a second phase of capital expenditure which we run into 100 crores per annum or maybe 130 crores per annum. And our payout is just about uh, 85 crores. So, do we have any capital allocation plans of uh, increasing our dividend? And a related question is that we have not seen any meaningful acquisitions globally in this space. So, are there any opportunities there where we can utilize the excess cash? Uh, on the cash flow front, yes, of course, last uh, we have gone through a major CapEx program as phase two is also underway here, including our Thailand plant is going through an expansion plan, as well as our UK subsidiary is also having the synthetic as well uh, as the, the uh, plan. So there are CapEx plans within this. It is not limited to 100 or 150 crores. It could be even more depending on the opportunities. Uh, and and we expect uh, you know depending on the uh, cash flow and the capital requirement for our capex also looking at any opportunity if and when it comes on the uh, uh, on the acquisition front we would definitely look at all options right now there is nothing on the table at, at the moment uh, Depending on the free cash flow, definitely I'm sure the board will consider uh, the the various uh, how to reward the shareholders. I'm sure it would definitely look at all these while deciding that. And sir, my last question is when you consider an expansion in margins, you are also considering the extra cost that you incur in uh, hiring employees, etc., or other related costs of expanding into new markets? Yes, uh, you know, as we uh, have expanded our capacity, we have added some uh, uh, some uh, people internationally to help us develop the New York markets, including the Saudi market, as well as the European markets, including the Americas, particularly South America. So we have added uh, uh, some senior people because you need to start developing the market. So the costs start getting incurring earlier. And hopefully we should be able to convert that into getting uh, higher revenue and uh, even out in the coming years. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aman Wiz from Astute Investment Management. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. My first question is uh, if you can uh, give an update on uh, our uh, plan for the U.S. as well as uh, uh, for the mining customers that uh, we were targeting. So what kind of volumes uh, do you see for these two uh, uh, segments for this year and next year? And how is the general traction going on? Uh, you see, the on the U.S. market, uh, the initial trial supplies have gone off well. Uh, with with the various uh, customers in North and South America, as well as uh, in South Africa and small quantities in Australia also. Uh, the, we have started getting some repeat orders. Mining takes a longer cycle time in terms of, uh, you know, applying to the customers, their, uh, their quality feedback, and then getting into the other supplies. So we are currently at about 2,500 tons per annum level as far as the mining rope is concerned and our endeavor is to take it to close to 
four to five thousand tons in the next two to three years. And similarly, for the U.S. Uh, sales, uh, what is our current sales and what are our uh, targets for two three years? Our our U.S. sales uh, is is uh, close to about uh, eight seven to eight thousand tons per annum, and we expect to grow uh, depending on the of course the uh, which sectors what kind of demand comes there. We expect to grow by ten to fifteen percent per annum in that market. And within the U.S. market, uh, specifically the sectors that we're targeting are. uh elevator ropes uh, uh gondola ropes which are also high value ropes as well as mining ropes like we uh, previously mentioned uh we've gotten a uh, decent traction uh you know with uh, uh, approaching new oems as well and that is the continuous endeavor to get secure more oem approvals and uh, be able to uh, cater to the high value segment like elevators and gondola Sure. Uh, my next question is: So, some of our international peers were facing some issues last one two years. So, uh, uh, both in I think US and Europe. So, if you can talk about, are they still facing issues because of energy, or there were some other issues also, or are they uh, coming back uh, in the industry uh, strongly? the cost the 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 cost uh, european manufacturers went through a high cost of energy which has definitely come down over a period of time after the things have stabilized uh, in in there but still they are high compared to the rest of the world in terms of their cost structure it's uh, it's it is you know all these are very strong companies be it uh, becard dryden or be it uh, wireco and uh, it's a healthy competition and definitely we are trying our best to see that how we can uh, you know continue to compete and and get a larger market share from that market but they are all in all 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 doing well and the overall market is well competition is also doing well so my final question in the opening remarks we talked about that uh, we, uh, in we are deepening our relationships with our uh, global OEM and especially new customers. So uh, even if like last one two years we have uh, gone to number of new customers and these are very big customers. So if you can talk about in terms of scale, uh, say if we started with X, where we are today? Is it like two X, five X? And where do you see this relationship over two three years? I, my, my main question is where, where do you see the uh, the trust on us uh, basically leading to much higher orders? Yeah. So over the last couple of years, like you mentioned, we have uh, secured new premium customers, especially in the uh, European market, uh, particularly through our two strong brands, which are Ocean Max, Mind Max brands, and we have successfully uh, executed these orders as well. And repeat orders have already uh, started coming in with some of the uh, you know big OEMs as well. And these orders have also uh, created references. uh within the uh, you know in, with other customers and we we've, we've been able to win new customers through these references as well within the region uh going forward using our uh, collaboration of the Brunton Shaw facility with our service centers EMM as well as the Reuter and the technical sales and support of GDC uh, we hope to continue to strengthen these relationships and uh, continue to uh, grow our relationships with these OEM Yeah, I, I was saying. Uh, so, do you think it will still take us two, three more years to get that trust so that they can give us substantial volumes and not small incremental repeat orders, or do you think it can happen sooner also? Oh, you see, we have made certain big progress with the European, particularly oil offshore and the big uh, wind energy sector, and uh, these are all project-based business as well as repeat orders. Uh, from the from the uh, from the previous equipments which they have supplied so you know like in last one year we have been able to make some major breakthroughs and get decent orders and we expect this to happen not in 2 3 years we expect to happen within the coming few quarters uh, sure sir that's it so thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Sakit Kapoor from Kapoor Company. Please go ahead. Yeah. So, Namaskar, Jawji. 
as alluding to the fact about this, uh, the breakthrough we have gone through, uh, got through the OEM to the mining segment. So the capacity addition that we are uh, that we have undergone and also that we are emphasizing are these all uh, uh, towards uh, these uh, these mining contracts only the segments which we will be taking to. So oh, the phase two part which is coming this year would be on the mining. We have sufficient capacity to take care of the current requirement, but for our future uh, requirement of mining. Uh, the phase two capex, uh, which is getting completed in 18 months, would be added. So that would only help us improve the capability and the quantity for the mining groups. So we have sufficient capacity to take care of that. But our major uh, growth, which is coming through our Ocean Max and our Brenton Shaw, is mainly in the oil and offshore uh, and the wind energy sector. That is giving us more traction based on the various. Uh, growth we have done. Mining is, of course, an important sector, but uh, we'll gradually ramp it up depending on the feedback and our supplies and the repeat orders. But good part about the mining business is that once it is established, it is a recurring business which continues to happen and not depending much on the project type of business which can happen, uh, you know, with spikes. Uh, just to keep so further understanding, what should be the mix? Currently, the, the landscape which we will be operating for the mining segment and the existing ocean max and the other opportunity, what should be the, looking in terms of the percentage mix for mining which you are uh, alluding to be an NUT type uh, uh, work going ahead? Right? Our mining is close to, uh, uh, close to 5 to 6%. Whereas the oil and uh, the wind energy would be in excess of 20%. Okay. And sir, you mentioned that you will be spending uh, around 167 crore for the additional 10,000 tons for this for the 18 months from uh, for this year. Yes. Okay. And uh, 40,000 tons uh, would be coming would be ramped up from Q1 uh, of, of this financial year. As I mentioned, it will it will happen gradually. During the year, we expect 12 to 15 percent growth in total volume compared to last year. But every quarter, we expect to gradually ramp it up uh, to be able to come to the, uh, the the expanded capacity. Correct, sir. Sir, on the other expenses uh, front, uh, did we have any one-off item uh, in terms of which, which Madam was earlier uh, referring to? because of uh, the uh, geopolitical issues? No, I don't think there is anything, uh, any expense related to the geopolitical issue which is there. Anirban, please. Uh... No, there are not. So, you know, if you are referring to the freight, of course, that's also inbuilt into the prices as well. But no additional expenses per se in other expenses which are related to the geopolitical issue. Nothing. Right, sir. Thank you, sir. I joined the queue and, and all the best to the team, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aman Sonthalia from AK Securities. Please go ahead. Sir, I have two more questions. Uh, sir, last year we did uh, USA Siam state purchase from joint venture partners. So, what is the opportunity here? Yeah, so uh, USA Siam, which is the Thailand entity, we uh, did acquire the remaining 50% stake of that USA that was previously a, a JV, like you mentioned, and the plant is already in operation since uh, since the uh, February of this year. Uh, in terms of opportunity, the plant capacity, which is uh, of elevator ropes, uh, primarily is about 170 to 180 tons per month. Uh, Again, it's primarily elevator ropes, but we would produce a mix of elevator and GP ropes depending on the demand from the market as well. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, the facility that was acquired, it is a sort of state-of-the-art facility, and it does have a lot of space for further expansion as well. So that is something also that we would consider for our future growth plans in Thailand. And one more question, that right now every exporter is facing that is a uh, Red Sea crisis. So we have distribution centers across different parts of the world. This helps us to keep the inventory. So does the Red Sea crisis offer the opportunity to give better services to the customer and acquire new customers? 
Yeah, uh, I mean, we have our distribution centers across the globe where we do stock and we sell, and uh, we have been able to uh, proactively stock ropes for the customers in these various centers so that we can meet uh, more of the just-in-time requirements, especially when there are so many logistical challenges. Uh, we want to do that. We want to ensure that, you know, we, uh, like Anirban had mentioned earlier, also we proactively build the inventory and we're able to continuously meet the demands of the customers without interruptions in the face of these logistical challenges. So uh, it, uh, it has helped us having that wide network close to the customer. Yeah, so while the Red Sea crisis we have been able to meet through the inventory at our subsidiaries, but it is also important to mention that because of the Red Sea crisis, the transit time to Europe and U.S. has gone up by between 15 days to 30 days depending on the shipping lines and time, which is in a way creating uh, certain delays in achieving the deliveries and also increasing the inventory uh, within our system, uh, you know, because most of it is supplies to our subsidiaries and tend to the end customers. So while there is an advantage on one side being closer to the customer with stocks on ground, but on the other side, it is impacting uh, uh, higher levels of inventory and higher supply time to, to, to meet the customer requirements also. And so, so the last one is that our key mantra was value-led volume growth. So will we start seeing this from Q1 25? Yes, we expect to start seeing this from Q1 and with gradual ramp up uh, throughout the next few quarters, you will get the advantage of, uh, we will see the advantage in our, in our uh, results. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for attending this call and showing interest in Usha Martin Limited. I hope we have been able to answer to all your questions. The company is dedicated to creating value for all its stakeholders in a sustainable manner. Should you need any further clarification or would you like to know more about the company, please feel free to reach out to us or to CDR India. Thank you once again for taking the time to join us on this call and see you all in the next quarter. Thank you. Thank you, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Usha Martin Limited, that concludes this conference. We thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.